The great hunt begins with the man that calls himself Bors. He is at a meeting with hundreds of dark friends from all over the world. Balsaman joins them and gives them images of Rand, Matt and Perrin and tells them that one of them is the dragon reborn and they are to keep an eye out for the three of them. Balsaman doesn't want the dragon dead, he wants the dragon to serve him. Back in Faldara, Rand is practicing sword fighting with Lan when they hear trumpets and drums at a distance. They see a large group of people approaching Faldara and Lan recognizes them as Aes Sedai and the Amarlin Seed. The Amarlin Seed is the leader of the Aes Sedai and one of the most important people in the world. Due to the fact that Rand is now a male channeler and the Aes Sedai are known for going after male channelers and gentling them. Rand panics and tries to get away. Gentling is a process of cutting someone from using the one power. People that are gentle usually end up without the will to live. Rand goes to his room to pack his stuff and heads for the stables to leave, but he is told that no one in the city may leave. After running into Iwain and explaining his dilemma, Iwain tries to help him out by hiding him in the dungeons where Pat and Fane is held. She mentions that the guards guarding Pat and Fane used to be nice, but now they are unpleasant. At the dungeons, Pat and Fane tells Rand that he will make him serve the Dark One. Rand and Iwain get creeped out by Fane, so Iwain decides to hide Rand in the woman's quarters. We switch over to Maureen, who is summoned by the Amarlin Sea. Maureen and the Amarlin, whose true name is Swan Sanchez, speak about Elaine, Nynaeve and Iwain and mention that they could be the most powerful Aes Sedai they have seen in ages. They also talk about the secret plan they originally had. They were to find the dragon and keep him in Tarbalon to guide him. But Moraine says that things never go to plan when dealing with Tiverian. Tiverian are people who are spun out of the wheel to fix the pattern when things are not going as planned. Moraine tells Swan that Rand can channel and that he is the most powerful Tiverian since Arthur Hawkwing and that Matt and Perrin are also Tiverian. They discuss the Horn of Valir and the Broken Seal to the Dark One's prison. These things are more evidence to the fact that the last battle is coming and Rand needs to be ready for it. Nynaeve finds Rand hiding from the Aes Sedai in the woman's chambers. She tells him that Iwain is visiting Pat and Fane in the dungeons. The alarms sound and Rand immediately goes to the dungeons in search of Iwain. On his way there, he encounters Trollocs and a Merdral, but the Shinarans come to his aid. At the dungeons, he finds the heads of two guards and on the wall, written in blood, the words, We will meet in Taman Head. It is never over, Althor. Leandrin Sadai of the Red Aja finds Rand scrubbing the words from the wall and she tries to use the one power to interrogate him, but Moraine interrupts this encounter. The Red Aja are Aes Sedai that prevent the dangerous use of the one power, mainly by finding male channelers and gentling them. Rand searches for Iwain and finds her and Matt unconscious. Pat and Fane is missing along with the Horn of Balir and Matt's dagger. Because Matt is linked to the dagger, he now needs it to survive. The Amerlin and a group of Aes Sedai heal Matt but it is only temporary. Matt needs to recover the dagger in order to break the link. Rand is summoned by the Amerlin Seed and he is told that Egwene and Nynaeve will be going to Tarbalan to become Aes Sedai and he is given the choice to either go with Inktar, Matt and Perrin to retrieve the horn and the dagger or stay behind. Rand chooses to go with Inktar and his friends. She also tells him that she knows he can channel and that he needs to learn to control it because he is the Dragon Reborn. As everyone is getting ready to leave, Rand's party is joined by Loyal and Hearing. Hearing has the special ability of smelling violence and he's the one that will track down the ones that stole the horn and dagger. Hearing follows the death trail left behind by the dark friends and takes the group south. In one abandoned village, they find the bodies of two guards from Faldara who appear to have been skinned alive and then hanged. In another abandoned village, the group finds a murderer nailed to a door. Everyone is scared, wondering what could have done that to a murderer. Inktar tells Rand 
that if anything happens to him, he is in charge. He then gives Rand a package that Moraine told him to give to Rand. When Rand opens the package, he finds the dragon banner. Matt and Perrin walk in on him looking at the banner, and Rand finally confesses to his friends that he can channel and that he thinks the Aes Sedai want to use him as a false dragon. That night, Rand, loyal and hearing, fall asleep next to a stone with strange marks on it. The next day, they wake up in a completely different world, and everyone except for Rand, loyal and hearing have disappeared. Loyal says that the stone they fell asleep next to might be a portal stone, which lets people travel to other possible worlds using the one power. Hearing says that he can still smell the trail left behind by the Dark Friends, so they decide to go find them and force them to tell them how to get back to the real world. At night, Rand is confronted by Balsamon, who once again tries to turn Rand to the shadow, but Rand refuses. Balsamon burns Rand's hand with his own sword and then disappears. Rand thinks he imagined it, but his hand is in pain, and the hair mark from the sword is branded into his hand. As they're traveling, they find a monument that indicates that in this version of the world, the Trollocs won the war against Arthur Hawkwing. The group is looking for any signs of life, but they can't find any until they hear a woman screaming. The woman turns out to be Selene and claims to be from Clarion and doesn't know how she got here, but she somehow knows a lot about portal stones and other things. The group is followed by a pack of Gromes, which are giant three-eyed creatures. Rand manages to kill the pack with his bow, but more creatures arrive. Selene takes them to a portal stone and teaches Rand how to get to the real world. When they arrive at the real world, Selene tells them that they are ahead of Pat and Fane and the Dark Friends, so they decide to camp and wait for Fane and the Horn. Hearing manages to track down the Dark Friend camp, and Rand and Loyal sneak in and take the horn and the dagger, but the Trollocs are alerted. Rand manages to kill some of them and escapes. Back at the camp, Rand wants to take the horn back to Shinar, but Talene convinces him to go to Karian instead and wait for Inktar and the group. On their way there, they stop at a village and find an excavation site with a large statue of a man holding a crystal sphere. Rand is very attracted to this statue and can't stop holding Sidene while looking at it. After a while, he manages to break free and the group spend the night at an inn. In the morning, Selene is gone and the group continue their journey into Kyrian where they will wait for Inktar and the rest of the group. When they arrive at Kyrian, Rand walks into an inn and hears the glee man telling stories. Rand recognizes him as Tom Marilyn. Tom says that he survived the fate back in Whitebridge because the fate had no interest in him, but he still injured his leg and now has a limp. Tom asks for his instruments back and Rand goes to Tom's room to give them to him. There he meets Dina, who is Tom's lover and is training to be the first female glee man. Rand tells Tom about the Horn of Belir and asks him to join him. Tom is intrigued but he refuses. Outside the inn, Rand and Loyal are attacked by Trollocs. They escape into the Illuminators Guild house. The Illuminators Guild are a guild that make fireworks and are the only ones that know how to make them. At the guild house, Rand and Loyal accidentally set fire to the entire house, but manage to escape the Trollocs and go back to the inn. Rand finds a lot of invitations from the most powerful houses of Korean and he tries to get rid of them. Rand and Loyal go to check the guardhouse and ask if Inktar has arrived. Loyal notices that the inn they are staying at is on fire. When they arrive at the inn, Hearing is unconscious and the horn and dagger have been stolen again. Rand and Loyal drag Hearing outside and find Matt, Perrin and Inktar waiting for him. To catch up with Matt and Perrin, we gotta go all the way back to the day Rand, Loyal and Hearing traveled to the other world. Perrin and the rest of the group notice that Rand and the others are gone and they can't find a single track of them. Perrin communicates with the wolves and they tell him that they don't know where Rand went but they can smell the dark friends that stole the horn and the dagger. Perrin tells Inktar the location of the Dark Friends, and when Inktar asks how he knows, Perrin tells him that he is able to communicate with wolves, but he wants to keep it a secret. Inktar agrees and tells the group that Perrin is also a sniffer, like hearing. 
they are joined by Baron, who is an Aes Sedai of the Brown Aja. The Brown Aja are Aes Sedai devoted to knowledge and wisdom. As they're following the Dark Friends, they come across an Aeoman who, according to Matt and Perrin, looks just like Ran. The Aeoman says that he is looking for he who comes with the dawn, and then draws the ancient Aes Sedai symbol in the ground and says that under this sign he will conquer. He then leaves and Perrin and the group continue their journey into Korean, where they manage to find Rand and Loyal with an unconscious hearing. Rand tells them all about his journey through the portal stone and how he got the horn and dagger and then lost them again. Baron heals Hirin, who manages to track down the Dark Friends once again to a house that belongs to Lord Barthanus. Hirin remembers that Rand received an invitation to Lord Barthanus's party. They go to the party and Rand finds Tom performing. The two have a conversation about how to deal with Aes Sedai. Loyal feels the presence of a gateway and the group assumes that Pat and Fane and the Dark Friends escape through the ways. When Rand activates the gateway to follow Pan and Fane, Machin Shin, the Black Wind, is waiting for him. The Black Wind tries to escape, but Loyal manages to close the gate. They now have to find another way to get to Fane. As they are leaving the party, Lord Barthanus gives Rand a message that Pat and Fane left for him. It says that he will wait for him in Tom and Head, and if he doesn't come, he will harm those of his blood. Rand tells everyone about the message, and they all think that it may be a trap, but Rand insists on going to Tom and Head. Varen tells them that Stedin Sofu also has a gateway and they can use it to follow Pat and Fane through the ways. Matt is looking worse and worse and Varen tells Rand that if he doesn't get the dagger back, Matt will die. Tom Marilyn goes back to the inn he's staying at and finds his lover, Dana, dead. He's attacked by an assassin who tells him that he's gathering information on Randall Thor. Tom kills the assassin and then leaves Kyrian. When Rand and the others reach Stedin Sofu, the Ogier elders that live in the Stedin give them permission to use the gateway, but when they try to go through it, Ma Chen Shin is once again waiting for them. Hearing suggest they use a portal stone, and the group agrees. The Ogiers take them to the closest portal stone, and Baron tells Rand all she knows about the stones. She says that the stones not only take you to other possible worlds, but can also take you to other stones in the real world. Rand uses the stone to travel straight to Tom and Head, but it doesn't go according to plan. The group goes through multiple lives that could have happened if they would have made different choices in life. And when they finally arrive at Tom and Head, many months have passed and everyone is in shock after experiencing all of those lives. We switch over to Iwain and Nynaeve, who we last saw in Faldara. They set out for Tarbalan with the rest of the Aes Sedai and are taught some lessons about channeling. Nynaeve learns that she has a block and is only able to channel when she's angry. Iwain has nightmares involving Rand and when she tells an Aes Sedai about them, she is told that she might be a dreamer. A dreamer is someone that has dreams of possible futures and can also walk in the dream world. When they finally arrive at the White Tower, Nynaeve is told she is to be made and accepted instead of a novice. She is tested with a Terangriel that makes her face her greatest fears. A Terangriel is a device that was made with a specific function during the Age of Legends. Since then, no one knows how to make them anymore. Nynaeve goes into the Terangriel three times and faces three fears, one from the past, another from the present, and the third from the future. She succeeds and she is now an accepted. Iwain meets the daughter heir of Andor, Elaine, her brother Gawain, her stepbrother Galad, and Min, who she remembers from Berlon. The three girls quickly become friends. She also spots the false dragon Loghain, who has been gentle and now walks around with a sadness in his eyes. Leandrin Sadai tells Iwain and Nynaeve that Rand is in trouble and if they want to help him and his friends, they need to come with her to Tom and Head. She also tells them not to tell anyone because the Black Aja is real and they are in the tower. The Black Aja are Aes Sedai that serve the Dark One. The White Tower does not acknowledge its existence. 
men in a lane join them in this quest and Leandrin takes them through the ways into Tom and Head. When they arrive at Tom and Head, Leandrin betrays them and gives them over to the Sanchan. The Sanchan Empire comes from the continent of Sanchan, located across the Aerith Ocean. They claim to be the descendants of Arthur Hawkwing, who once ruled all of the Westlands as the High King. The Sun Chan have now returned to retake what was once Hawkwind's empire. Ewain and Min are captured, but Nynaeve and Elaine manage to escape. The Sun Chan place a collar around Ewain's neck. This collar takes away her ability to channel, unless the person holding the collar's leash allows her to. The Sun Chan hate women that can channel and place these collars around their necks to control them and use them. Ewain and Min are then taken to the town of Falma. Meanwhile, Rand and the rest of the group tracked down Pat and Fane to Falma. Pat and Fane became friendly with the Sun Chan and gave them the horn and dagger. He also told them that Rand and his friends are dark friends and they will come to steal the horn and dagger. When Rand and the group arrive at Falma, they track down the horn and dagger to a house. They sneak into the house and take the horn and dagger. Rand sees Ewain with a collar around her neck and just then they are ambushed by the Sun Chan. A battle commences and Rand manages to kill a Sun Chan Blade Master using the skills he learned from his father and Lan. Rand wants to go back and save Ewain but ultimately decides to leave with the rest of the group. At the same time, Nynaeve and Elaine meet up with Min who doesn't have a collar because she can't channel and tells them where Wayne is. Nynaeve manages to take a collar and place it on one of the Sanchan. She then dresses up as one of them and goes to where Ewain is being held with Elaine and Min and they manage to free her. Outside, they notice that the streets are empty except for the Sanchan soldiers. Ewain, who is now traumatized from having been collared for so long, panics and attacks the Sanchan with the One Power. Nynaeve joins her and a battle commences. Rand and the rest of the group are hiding from the Sun Chan in an alleyway. Inktar reveals to Rand that he is a dark friend and that he wanted to sound the Horn of Valir and lead the heroes of the ages against Shia Ghul to redeem himself from what he had done. Inktar then decides to sacrifice his life to give Rand and the rest of the group time to escape. As they are escaping, they notice that they are trapped in between two armies, the Sun Chan army on one side and a White Cloak army on the other. The White Cloaks have come to drive the invading Sun Chan army away. Having no other option, they do the only reasonable thing. They all look at the Horn of Belir and Matt blows it. Suddenly, a fog rises and figures start to appear. They are the heroes of the ages, led by Arthur Hawkwind himself. They refer to Rand as Louis Theron and Rand tells them to drive the Sunshine army away and rescue Ewain and a huge battle begins. Rand is then teleported to the sky and fights Balsamon once again. Balsamon pierces Rand's side with his staff but Rand manages to drive his sword into Balsamon's heart. The Sunshine are driven away and the White Cloak army is destroyed. Min finds Rand on the ground unconscious and notices that he now has a heron mark on each hand and a wound on his side. She drags Rand into a bed and Selene joins her. Selene tells Min that Rand is the dragon reborn and that her real name is Lanfear, one of the Forsaken. When Rand wakes up days later, Min tells him that Egwene, Nynaeve, Hirin, and Matt have taken the horn and the dagger back to the White Tower and that the wound on his side does not heal properly. Moiraine joins them and tells Rand that back in Shadow Logos, Pat and Fane was consumed by Mordis and he is now a mixture of the two and a very dangerous enemy. She also tells him that everyone saw him fight the Dark One in the sky. Everyone now knows that he is the Dragon Reborn and the entire world is reacting to this news. 